Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about Season 5, Episode 6 of HBO Max's Gamora. You know, I've been saying all season how I kind of feel like I've kind of likened this season to a pendulum where it's like it's swinging in Shiro's way and then it's swinging in Gennaro's way. At least that's where I think it's going. It started off swinging in Gennaro's way, but it's been in Shiro's direction for a little while now. And I keep thinking it's going to swing back toward Gennaro and it's not. Uh, <laughs> Shiro's been getting win after win. And just when I think, OK, maybe uh, it's Jenny's turn to get a win. Nope. Uh, Chiro continues to pull off some unlikely victories in the face of pretty insurmountable odds here. Uh, this episode mainly revolves around Gennaro trying to find uh, Chiro's location. He puts out a uh, puts out money on his head, but not even on his head, just really just money out for information, you know, just to find out, you know, where might where he might be at. And we see a sequence where uh, these two guys one is named, I think, uh, yeah, MMA, and the other is named Cantonese. And they are basically hearing Lil Monk's proposition for uh, information on Chiro's location. And I think it was MMA. MMA is the one who, yeah, MMA decides that he wants to uh, potentially get uh, drugs instead of money so he can get his business back up and running if he could provide information on Chiro. And he, he brings this to his homie, Cantonese, and Cantonese kind of like, yeah, I don't really know. I don't think it's a good idea, yada, yada. And sure enough, come to find out, Cantonese not only knows where they're at, he's actually hanging with them, and he relays all this information to them. And for the rest of the episode, we kind of see like a, a something of a chess game back and forth where we see Gennaro trying to figure out ways to catch or thwart Chiro, and then we also see Chiro finding out ways to kind of help amass himself an army, get himself some weaponry, and get a new location. So uh, lots of developments here. Uh, there's not too much time that needs to be spent on anything, but there are a few things that I want to talk about that I think are going to be relevant for these last four episodes, yeah, four, four episodes or so uh, in this season and this series. So um, I want to start with... Omaestral's wife, who I, who's, I think her name's Luciana or something like that. I can't recall. But after the attempt on Azura and Pietro's life, Gennaro basically has them, uh, Omaestral and his wife, essentially mainly the wife, kind of like babysitting Azura. She's not a fan. It's, it's not going well. But then she, I don't want to say offers, uh, like a, not an olive branch, but she she starts to find a way to get in Azura's good graces. She takes her back, takes her and Pietro back to her house, which they shouldn't have even been leaving the house in the first place, Gennaro's house in the first place. She takes him over there and she, she earns a little bit of trust by putting Pietro in a position where he can play with another kid. And Azura seems to like that. And then later she has in that same spot where, <laughs> in that same spot where uh, Chiro hung some bodies, <laughs> uh, she, construct something of a playground for Pietro to play in if they can't leave. And now she's fully done the work to kind of earn Azura's trust, right? And Azura starts off kind of like, yeah, I know you're here to babysit me. I don't want to hear it, yada, yada, yada. And by the end of the episode, Gennaro's saying like, look, I don't even want you to see her anymore. And Azura's like, no, I'm going to do that anyway. And it seems very clear that Azura is probably going to be uh, the cause of Gennaro's downfall. She's very stubborn. Uh, she's very gullible as well. Like I, I, I suspected from the first moment we saw Omaestral's wife that she was conniving. She had plans for power. She had plans to help him be in power, and that everything she's doing, she's do, she's using it as an opportunity for herself and for him. That seems pretty obvious to me. I feel like it should be obvious to Azura, but she's being manipulated masterfully by this wife. And one thing that kind of bothers me about this a little bit is that when you have shows where the protagonist is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a bad guy, uh, it seems like they always want to make his wife be like the reason for his downfall and making the character unlikable. And... I don't, you know, I'm not sitting here taking offense because I'm not a woman to, to, to the portrayal of woman, women, but I think it's kind of a bad idea to consistently have this uh, this dynamic 
where you you have the protagonist and he, he is technically a bad guy and you you by by having his wife be the person who is constantly putting him in these tough situations you automatically make the wife unlikable because even though the protagonist is a bad guy he is still the protagonist and we do still kind of want to see him win so to see azura kind of like bringing him down from the inside almost i feel a little squeamish about that um but they've really been kind of leaning into her as of late being more of a uh just like a, a thorn in his side for the for the for the most part and it kind of sucks to see that but i'm pretty sure that's the direction we're going she's already opening the door for oh my oh who we already know has his own jealousy issues um uh, over of over Gennaro and whether or not he thinks Gennaro can even be successful against Jiro. She she's opening the door for those two to step in and have a prime real estate when it comes to catching Gennaro with his pants down. So uh hopefully that's gonna change, but I doubt I doubt that it is. <laughs> um let's see, what else do I have here that I want to discuss? Um we see that Shiro has a plan that's not only to get a new hideout, but to also solidify an army as well. And they, they, we see this kind of play out throughout the episode where, you know, we start off knowing that some sort of plan is being enacted. And in the show's typical fashion, we see the parts of these this plan coming into play without the context. We don't know the plan, so we don't know what's happening. And it all kind of wraps up at the end. And in essence, Chiro wants to use, he uses Enzo to get out to talk to Don Vincenzo's widow about, uh, uh, apparently about, uh, getting weapons and whatnot and then he also propositions her to give him a place to stay not well, not a place to stay but like a base of operations almost and um she ends up meeting up with him and they essentially make a deal they take him to uh a place that i didn't recognize at first at the end of the at the end of the episode that seems to have some big childhood importance to chiro and it's uh I guess apparently it's like the orphanage that he grew up in, uh, in Limortale, which I only watched the one time and haven't seen it since. So I wouldn't recognize, um, any structures from that. I think that's kind of a bad idea to take, uh, a structure from a spinoff movie and have it play an important role in a season in an episode in a season of television that's so far away chronologically from, uh, from that episode. Like if this was something from like, you know, what is this, February 2022? If, say, you know, this building at the end of this episode, and, and granted, this was not February 22, 2022 when this was filmed, or when it, it was January when it came out on HBO Max, but whatever the case may be, at the very latest, the show premiered in November of 2021 in uh, in Italy, I believe. So, but, like, the the Limortale movie is, the Limortale movie is from, like, it's from, like, a couple years ago, I think. I think it's from in between seasons three and four. So it's like, it's weird to, what is it? It might be after four. I don't know. But either way, it's pretty, it's pretty dated. I, I don't, and I don't know if it's the best idea to, to reference something like that. But uh, apparently he now has a base of operations and he now has uh, potentially some weapons. And he does this by helping the wife get revenge on the broker who gave up Da Vincenzo's uh location and his shipment so in this episode uh Gennaro goes to that same broker to try to kind of do the same thing to get to to intercept the shipment and Chiro takes the wife to uh to I think uh, I think it was like a meetup location they wipe out everyone there and they capture the broker and essentially use the broker to trick Gennaro and when Gennaro shows up at this truck to steal this shipment it, there's nothing there and and also, I want to say, I think the shot of him in the empty trailer, I think he was like backlit with like a blue, well, like a blue light. <laughs> and uh, it was a really cool, like a, like a silhouetted shot of him in this truck. It was pretty cool. But um, and it, it, it only served to further uh, cause Gennaro to lose the trust of his team. So now he's got um, he's losing his wife. Uh, he's losing the trust and faith of his his uh, his crew. And he's got people coming at him from multiple angles, some of which he doesn't even know about. Um, one of the things that I did want to talk about is a con, which I haven't talked about too many cons about this show so far. And, well, about this show and about this season, but particularly about the show uh, as a whole. The show does a great job of making sure that 
uh, it connects the dots. Like you're, you're very rarely sitting there wondering like, how did this happen? Where does this come from? You might feel that way in the moment, but the show always brings it around at the end. And that's, one, that's actually my favorite thing about the show is that you can watch a, a let's say, 45-minute episode of Gamora and have no idea what you're, like, what's going on for the first 40 minutes. You could just be compelled by what you're seeing on the screen. But then in that last five to 10 minutes, they kind of bring it all together. And you go, oh, that's who this person was or that's why I was seeing this. So the show has a good, uh, does a good job of kind of leaving you just enough in the dark to where you don't necessarily know where they're taking you, but you do have faith that they're taking you somewhere. And this episode did something that bothered me in that it opens with uh, Gennaro and his crew desecrating the uh, bodies of Don Vincenzo and I think there was another person in the cemetery as well. And I'm watching this like, how did he find out that the wife was responsible for the hit on, or the hit attempt on Azura and Pietro? Because one of the things that I found most compelling about this season was the fact that he doesn't know that she's got it out for him. So the whole, so the whole thing with like her, her telling her, her bodyguard or right hand man or whatever to go after Azura and Pietro was interesting to me because that's one of the things, like Gennaro already has all these things on his plate. He doesn't even know that he's got this like vengeful widow coming after him. But then we open up this episode and he just knows who did it? And I, it just bothers bothered me that they at no point did they lay out like, okay, here's it, it could have been a, just a throwaway line like, hey, uh, so and so, go out in the streets and find out who's responsible for this hit, something like that. It, and we don't even need to see the person come back and say, hey, it was so and so. If he threw that line out there, and then he's at the cemetery, I'm like, okay, well, I guess somebody gave him some information. But I don't like having to assume that maybe he did that, maybe he did this. You know, any number of things he could have done to get that information. I don't want to have to assume that. I want the show to, at the very least, let me know that they didn't forget that that's something that needs to be discovered. And if you just have a line where he's like, I want to know who did this, I'll give 50,000 euros to the person who uh, gives me information on who's responsible for this. I... I don't even need the scene where they tell him who did it. Like I just like that's all I need to know is that he thought I want to know who's behind this. But they just skip all over that and they just start this episode right up with him taking revenge on the person, not even discovering it, taking revenge on the person. And so like that that bothered me. And I I don't think I've ever had a con uh, when I've talked about this show where I'm like I didn't like this or I didn't like that. But that just that just didn't really sit well with me. Um. So let me see what else did I have about this episode that I might have wanted to discuss. Um. Solidifying the army. We talked about that. The revealing of the plan to find the new hideout. Uh, we talked about uh, Omaistral's wife, who, um, I, like I said, I continue to think that she's going to uh, continue to kind of like get work her way in there and that Azura is going to open the door and allow that to happen. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, and now Enzo, Enzo and Chiro now have... Uh, that wife on their team, they're probably going to have some of her crew now. She's going to get them weapons. They got a base. So despite the fact that everything's been crumbling around Gennaro over the course of the past few episodes, things are just getting worse for him. And now he's looking out man because now they're going to have people. They're going to have weapons. They have a base. And now he's losing the faith of his people. He's got people planning a plot against him. I don't think you could trust uh, uh, Lil Monk. Like there's just, two, there's, there's too many things going on around him that he's just not prepared to take on alone. So it's starting to look like uh, we're going to end up with a pretty bad ending for Gennaro. But there's still four episodes left. I'm sorry I'm so far behind. There's so many different things coming on that I need to cover. Uh, I'm trying my best to get caught up on this show. I've only got four more episodes left. My goal is to be done with the show um, by Friday. On Friday. Not by Friday. On Friday. So... I don't know how I'm going to get videos out throughout that time. Like, am I going to be watching episodes throughout the week and getting the videos out? Am I going to watch all the episodes, the remaining four episodes on Friday and then try to record four videos on Saturday? I don't know. But my goal is to at least be done watching these final four episodes by the end of the day on Friday. So I would say probably expect me to wrap up these videos for this show within the next, over the next, you know, five, six, seven days, something like that. Um, and until then, peace.